Good evening, I'm David Kramer with Alaska Weather. As always, please visit our website, weather.gov slash Alaska, get updates to the forecast through that means, or check out any watches, warnings, or advisories that we might have out for your area. You can also call our weather info line, 1-800-472-0391, get the updates to the forecast through that means as well, and email me at the address at the bottom of the screen, david.kramer at noaa.gov. Starting off, we have a winter storm warning out in southeast Alaska. This is specifically for Elfin Cove and Pelican. We are expecting eight or five to eight inches of new snow. This is going to start 8 p.m. this evening and go until 1 p.m. on Friday. Again, this is a winter storm warning for snow for Elfin Cove and Pelican. We have several advisories out for southeast Alaska. Haines, Gustavus, Juno, Sitka, and Yakutat all have winter weather advisories out for snow. Anywhere from 2 to 9 inches. Up by Yakutat area, we expect 6 to 9 inches. Out by Haines, 3 to 5. Gustavus, 3 to 5 as well. Pelican, 5 to 8. Sitka, 2 to 7. Juno, 2 to 7. Places like Huna are going to be a little bit more protected, only expecting to see up to 2 inches there. For timing, Yakutat is now in effect until 5 a.m. on Friday morning. Haynes and Gustavus are both going to start 10 p.m. this evening and go until 1 p.m. on Friday. And Juno and Sitka are both going to start at 1 a.m. Friday morning and then go till 7 p.m. on Friday. Again, these are all winter weather advisories out for snow. And you can check our website weather.gov slash Alaska to get further updates on any of these locations that you might be concerned about. For our satellite imagery, we'll start off actually by southeast Alaska where our advisories and warning are. You can see the low out over the northern part of the Gulf of Alaska helping to push in moisture into the area. You can see some of the cloud cover making it in over Yakutat. We have another system coming up from the south bringing in some cloud cover to the southern portions of the panhandle at this time. Out west, we can see a frontal system pushing in through the Aleutian Islands with a lot of cloud cover extending out for the central and western Aleutians as well as the Pribilof Islands. Finally, up in mainland Alaska, not a lot of cloud cover as we look out west where we're seeing a lot of high pressure, but there is some lower cloud cover out along the Arctic coastline. For our weather for the remainder of the day, we do have that high pressure extending in from northeastern Russia down the west coast of the state, keeping that area fairly dry. But to the west of this, we have that system pushing in towards the high, bringing its frontal system in closer towards the central Aleutian Islands. We are seeing some rain and snow mixing for the western Aleutians, but warmer out ahead of that with our warm front coming up with that strong southerly push of air that we're seeing. We're seeing rain for the central Aleutians as well as the eastern Aleutians. However, still cold enough over the Pribilof Islands to see primarily snow. Now, that's also going to be true for the Alaska Peninsula. Out of mainland Alaska to the east of the ridging that's along the west coast of the state, we are going to see some snow for the central and eastern portions of the interior, as well as some light snow up along the Arctic coastline. Down in south central Alaska, still some areas of snow lingering for today, but we are seeing that snow shift further to the east as we have our low out over the northern Gulf push more to the east, bringing that snow into the Yakutat area and into the northern portions of the Panhandle. Southern portions of the Panhandle staying a little bit warmer, expecting to see some rain down there. For tonight, that was going to push in further into the northern Panhandle area, continuing to bring snow to the northern portions as well as the Yakutat area, but now extending that snow down all throughout the southern portions of the Panhandle as well. Out over mainland Alaska, as that low exits, we'll start to see a diminishment of precipitation out over south central Alaska, with just some lingering snow out over the Alaska Range. There will also be some snow up in the eastern portions of the interior and along the Arctic coastline, where we will also see some fog develop tonight. High pressure ridging still extending over much of the west coast, keeping precipitation at bay for tonight, but our front is pushing farther into the central bearing and making it over the eastern Aleutians as well. We are seeing rain for the central and eastern Aleutians and starting to push up some of that rain into the Pribilof Islands area. 
Further behind the system, we're starting to pull back in some cold air, transitioning the rain to a rain and snow mix for the western Aleutian Islands. As we move into Friday, that rain and snow mix line is going to push farther to the east. Now we'll see rain and snow mix for the central and western Aleutian Islands. Still warm air by the eastern Aleutians as well as the Alaska Peninsula, but Purple Off Islands are going to start to switch back over to a rain and snow mix as well. As our high pressure that was dominant over the west coast pushes east and moves over the uh, north slope area, we are going to start to see some of the precipitation make it into the southwest coastline as well. Out over the far eastern portions of the interior, we are going to see some snow there as well, but much of mainland Alaska should be fairly dry on Friday. Down in the Panhandle area, we're going to have some lingering snow, especially in those northern locations Friday morning, but we will have snow throughout much of the area through Friday for the Panhandle. Finally, as we move into Saturday, some lingering snow out over the southern portions of the Panhandle as high pressure starts to dive south into the Yukon Territory area which is going to start to clear up some of the northern locations of the Panhandle. Our frontal system is being held up somewhat by that high pressure, but still starting to push some of that precipitation that was along just the coastline of southwest Alaska, a little bit to more the interior locations of southwest Alaska, as well as far east as the eastern Kenai Peninsula. Kodiak Island also expecting to see some snow, and snow out for the Purple Off Islands as well. Behind that system, we are starting to wrap in some of that colder air, so rain and snow mix is expected for the central and eastern Aleutian Islands, and all snow for the western Aleutians. With some of the stronger winds that we do expect by the St. Lawrence Island area, we do also anticipate some areas of blowing snow up there. For our temperatures on Friday morning, we'll start with the Friday morning lows down in the Panhandle area, dropping down to near freezing for southern locations. Northern locations are going to go down into the mid to lower 20s. Yakutak going to see 22 degrees for that low. For South Central Alaska, near the water, we are expecting temperatures to drop into the teens. Kodiak City down to 17 degrees. For interior locations of South Central, primarily going to go below zero. Anchorage is going to stay a little bit warmer down into the single digits there. Up into the interior, all locations going to drop below zero for the Friday morning lows. Going to get progressively colder as we move farther to the north. Fort Yukon down to minus 26. Arctic Village down to minus 27. Coldest in the state for Friday morning. As we move farther to the west, it is going to warm up a little bit as we get by. Ambler only down to minus 16. Up along the Arctic coastline, minus teens for western locations, and minus 21 for dead horse colder as we get farther to the east. Down the west coast of the state, we are going to see temperatures dropping down into the minus teens, with Kotzebue getting down to minus 15, a little bit warmer on St. Lawrence Island, with Savuma getting down to minus 8. Down in southwest Alaska near the coastline, it's going to be near zero, but as we get to interior locations, it's going to be in the negative single digits. Down in the Alaska Peninsula, we are going to drop down to near freezing and then stay in the mid to upper 30s for the Aleutian Islands, with St. Paul getting down a little bit colder, down to 31 degrees. Friday afternoon highs down in the Panhandle area, southern locations, upper 30s to near 40, the lower to mid 30s for northern locations. In south central Alaska, most places will be in the lower to mid 20s, a little bit colder there in Glen Allen, only going to get up to 16 degrees. As we move up into the interior, into the positive teens for southern locations, single digits for some of the northern locations, and as we get into the Brooks Range, going to stay below zero. Arctic coastline also going to stay below zero. Colder once again for Dead Horse, only getting up to minus nine. For the Kotzebue Sound area, just below zero is expected, and then single digits around the Norton Sound. For southwest Alaska, in the teens for most locations, getting progressively warmer as we get farther to the south. And then for the Alaska Peninsula, near 40 degrees, that's going to extend out for the eastern Aleutians, but mid-30s for the central and western Aleutians, as well as the Purple Off Islands. For our Saturday morning lows in the Panhandle area, we are going to drop down into the mid to upper 20s for most locations, colder in the Lynn Canal area, as well as at Yakutat in the teens there. Down in the teens for much of the coastline for South Central Alaska, single digits around Cook Inlet, and then going below zero for more interior locations like Talkeetna and Glen Allen. Up in the interior, dropping below zero for all locations warmer farthest to the south. McGrath only dropping down to minus eight, down to the minus 20s as we get to the Yukon Flats area, and by Arctic Village, then along the Arctic coastline, minus 20s out east, and minus teens out west. Minus teens for the Kotzebue Sound area, minus single digits expected for the Norton Sound area. Southwest Alaska, we are going to see primarily in the teens. Some of the more interior locations will stay or get down to a little bit colder near zero. Along the Alaska Peninsula, getting down to just above freezing, and then mid-30s for the Aleutian Islands and Pribilofs. 
For our afternoon highs on Saturday, we are expecting temperatures to get near 40 for southern locations of the Panhandle, mid to upper 30s for much of the rest of the Panhandle area, and the 20s for our areas away from the Gulf of Alaska for south central Alaska, but along the Gulf right around 30 degrees, Kodiak getting up to 36. And the interior southern location is going to get up into the teens, and then near 10 degrees as we get farther to the north, eventually single digits in the Brooks Range. Along the Arctic coastline, temperatures staying below zero and on minus single digits. For the Kotzebue Sound area, positive single digits. Into the teens for the Norton Sound area. Southwest Alaska, primarily in the 20s. Alaska Peninsula area is going to be mid to upper 30s, as well as much of the Aleutian Islands, but getting colder as we get farther to the west. And then finally, for the Purple Off Islands, we expect temperatures in the mid 30s. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. For aviation, we'll start off with a look at our flying weather on Friday morning. Way out west, we have our low pressure system and associated front bringing a lot of IFR conditions to the Bering Sea and Aleutian Islands area, continuing to press farther and farther to the east as time goes on. Out of our mainland Alaska, however, primarily VFR conditions are expected. Some isolated areas of MVFR and IFR around the Alaska Range and then up along the northwest coastline, including Kotzebue Sound, we do have some areas of MVFR as well. Out in southeast Alaska, in the central and northern locations, we're seeing some MVFR conditions as well as some MVFR in the far southern locations. For Friday afternoon, still some lingering MVFR around the Gulf of Alaska coastline near southeast Alaska as well as some MVFR along the coastal mountains. Mainland Alaska, however, will be primarily VFR throughout Friday afternoon. Up along the Chukchi Sea coastline, we will see some isolated areas of MVFR as well. And then down in the Bering Sea and Aleutians, our frontal system continuing to push to the east, bringing some IFR conditions to the eastern Bering, as well as the eastern Aleutian Islands, and starting to make it into the Alaska Peninsula. Behind the front itself, we will have some lower conditions as well out for the central and western Aleutian Islands with IFR conditions expected there. Saturday morning, the front continues to push farther to the east, bringing some IFR conditions into the Bristol Bay area as well as out by Kodiak Island, and some IFR for the Pribilof Islands as well as the eastern Aleutians. Conditions are going to improve as we move farther to the west with MVFR for the central Aleutians and VFR for the western Aleutians. The remainder of mainland Alaska will be primarily VFR. Again, we'll have some areas of isolated MVFR for the Chukchi Sea coastline as well as along the Arctic coast. And then down in the Panhandle area, some lingering areas of MVFR near the Gulf waters as well as the coastal mountains. For Saturday afternoon, MVFR conditions spreading throughout southern and central portions of the Panhandle with IFR conditions out over the Gulf of Alaska, extending out for Kodiak Island and then through the Bristol Bay area and YK Delta. We're also going to have those IFR conditions extend a little bit farther west out towards the Purple Off Islands, but then a mixture of MVFR and VFR conditions for the remainder of the Bering Sea and Aleutians. The rest of mainland Alaska will be primarily VFR until we get up along the Arctic coastline where we'll have some areas of MVFR conditions expected, particularly around Ukiagvik area. As we look through the passes, starting up North Anaktivik Pass is going to be VFR throughout the day on Friday, as well as at Adigan Pass. Much of the Alaska Range is also going to be VFR, Lake Clark and Merrill both going to be VFR on Friday, as well as Rainy Pass, Windy Pass, and Isabel Pass. Finally, as we get out by Mentasta Pass, we're going to start off IFR in the early morning and then improve to VFR conditions as we push into late morning and early afternoon. Tanita Pass should be VFR throughout the day Friday, as well as at Portage, and then Chilkoot and Y will both start off IFR and improve to marginal conditions in the afternoon. For our surface freezing line, moving through the central portions of the Bering Sea and then out through the Alaska Peninsula, down in the southern Gulf, and then out through the southern portions of the Panhandle. We have an area of warmer air extending up towards the eastern Aleutian Islands with areas around 4,000 feet for those freezing levels by the eastern Aleutians and just to the south around 6,000 feet. For our icing, starting off over the Panhandle area above 1,000 feet is expected. With our front pushing through the uh, central and eastern portions of the Bering Sea, we are expecting below 10,000 feet for those areas extending out towards Kodiak Island as well. And then for the central and western Aleutians, above 2,000 feet is expected. For our jet stream, strongest portion of the jet is going to move through the Alaska Peninsula area at 100 knots out of a southwesterly direction, become northwesterly, exiting out into the North Pacific around 100 knots over Kodiak Island. Down to 9,000 feet on Friday, we do have stronger winds south of the Aleutian Islands up to as high as 65 knots out of a westerly direction, but as we get over the islands, strongest winds are going to be 45 knots out of the west becoming southerly near the Purple Off Islands at 30 knots, and then southeasterly in the northern Bering at 45 knots. 
out over the far northern location of the state, easterly winds up to as high as 20 knots, and then out over the Panhandle area, west to northwest winds 30 knots are expected. Down to 3,000 feet, out over the Panhandle area, northwesterly winds 25 knots in the central locations. Much of mainland Alaska will be relatively calm. Until we get to the west coast, especially southwest coastline, we'll see some south to southeast winds up to as high as 40 knots, and then getting up to as high as 60 knots west of Nunavik Island and out over St. Matthew Island. Out for the Aleutian Islands, starting out by the western Aleutians, northerly winds 25 knots there, becoming westerly for the central Aleutians 35 knots, stronger over the Pacific, getting up to a size 55 knots there. And the eastern Aleutians and the western portions of the Alaska Peninsula out of a westerly direction, around 35 to 40 knots. For our turbulence, eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula area below 4,000 feet is going to extend up. Uh, for the Bristol Bay area as well, below 5,000 feet for South Central Alaska, and below 6,000 feet for the southern portions of the Panhandle. What's up, Night Visions? Trace here, and this week the moon is waxing to a full worm moon in March, also known as the Crow Moon, Sap Moon, Sugar Moon, and so many more names, actually. It's a super moon as well. A full moon, especially a bright one, hides dimmer sky objects, and it is not alone. Light pollution can really mess with an astronomer's mojo. Like all pollution, light pollution affects more than just the source. But luckily for us, tools do exist to find dark sky preserves. These are often officially designated places to escape light and see the stars in all of their glory. Some states, especially those with major observatories, even have laws to limit light pollution, which also saves energy. Seeing in a darkened sky is incredible. Satellites are as bright as stars, planets pop right out, and the ribbon of the Milky Way, wow. Heading to a dark sky site is a safe, physically distant road trip that I would recommend five stars. Thousands of stars, actually. Keep looking up. Ever been to the beach and noticed litter like plastic bottles or foam takeout containers on the sand? Or maybe you've been to a river or bay where there's a bag or a car tire stuck in the mud on the shore, or a bunch of deflated balloons that say happy birthday floating in the water? All of that junk in the water or on the shoreline is considered marine debris. It's anything solid and man made in the ocean or Great Lakes that is not supposed to be there. And anything people use every day can become marine debris if they don't dispose of it properly. And I mean anything. The most common items we find when we do shoreline cleanups are plastics. But we also find rubber, cloth, glass, metal, and paper litter. Sometimes the debris is so tiny, like a plastic microbead from your face wash, that you can barely see it in the water. Marine debris is more than just trash in the ocean. Sometimes fishers lose their gear like fishing traps, nets, or fishing line, and it continues to drift through the water, catching animals for a long time. We call that derelict fishing gear, and it's marine debris. Have you ever seen an old boat left behind on a shoreline? Abandoned and derelict vessels are also marine debris. So let's review. Anything we use every day can become marine debris if we don't dispose of it properly or if it goes into the water by accident. Marine debris can be very small or can be very big and anything in between. But most importantly, marine debris is one of the biggest pollution problems facing the world's oceans and waterways today. How does marine debris impact the ocean, animals, and me? Would you want to swim in a beach littered with trash? Of course not. And the animals who live in the ocean don't either. The difference is, they don't have a choice. Marine species often get tangled in debris, from fishing nets to six-pack rings. If they get caught, they could get injured or even die. And even if they don't get entangled, many animals mistake plastic debris for food and eat it. This fills their stomach with junk they can't digest. Debris can also damage important habitats, like coral reefs, by breaking or smothering them. Corals serve as the base of the marine ecosystem, and impacts here can be felt all the way to you and me. Plus, 
Plastics have harmful chemicals in them. Fish eat plastic, we eat fish. No, no, no. The question is, can those chemicals harm us? Marine debris also hurts the economy. It costs a lot of money to clean up, and people don't want to go to dirty beaches. Boats and ships could run into large pieces of debris too, or get their propellers tangled. We need the ocean and everything in it, and the ocean needs us to keep it free of debris. about marine debris. A lot of the trash that's in our ocean is plastic. And that marine debris is hurting our environment, economy, and health. The problem will only get worse. Unless we change the way we consume and dispose of products. There are solutions. And together, we can prevent litter from ending up in the ocean. Some people might say, well, I'm just one person, so I can't make a difference. But that's just not true. If each person who creates trash, and that's just about everyone, took action, it would add up to a whole lot of change. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention. And we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep debris out of the ocean in the first place. You can bring your own shopping bag, drink out of a reusable bottle, and participate in things like a shoreline cleanup. Join a group cleaning up the beach or grab some friends and clean up your street. It's easy. Be more conscious of how many disposable plastic items you're using. And if you do, where are you putting it? In the trash can? Whoops. Or in the recycling bin? So here's the challenge. The next time you finish using a throwaway item, a bag, a bottle, or utensil, answer the question, where is this going? Because ultimately, when you throw stuff away, there really is no away. It has to go somewhere. So keep asking yourself this important question. How will you keep your trash from becoming marine debris? And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back to the Alaska Weather Show. And today's marine weather segment, the sea ice edge, looks like it's going to be trying to push about 15 nautical miles west and 15 nautical miles south over the next each day uh, as we develop more northeasterly winds over the ice pack in response to a frontal system moving across the Bering Sea, also uh, attendant with a couple areas of low pressure. But in southeast Alaska, the southeast peninsula, inner waterways, winds will still generally be north to northwest, 10 to 15 knots, waves running a few feet. Along the coast, though, open waters, uh, west winds upwards to 30 knots and waves running 11 to 12 feet. Northwest winds around 20 knots, waves 9 to 10 feet, especially west of Yakutat. And then on Saturday, uh, winds are going to become more southeast to south, and uh, we are expecting waves in the inner waterway anywhere from around two feet, Skagway, Juneau, to five feet uh, down toward Ketchikan, and around uh, 10 to 12 feet for the open waters. As we head into south central areas, uh, winds will still be have a northerly component to them on Friday in Prince William Sound, 25 knot north winds, four footers. But off the Kenai, northwest uh, to winds of 25 to 30 knots, waves six to eight feet, as well as at the mouth of Cook Inlet. And then on Saturday, look for uh, winds across uh, Prince William Sound to turn more northeasterly, 20 knots, four footers, but notice there's some channeling with the northeast winds, stronger winds upwards to 40 knots. Uh, there between Kodiak Island and the Kenai, as well as the mouth of Cook Inlet, where we are expecting waves to be building up 12 to near 15 feet. And across the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island uh, for Friday, uh, again, winds Kodiak Island somewhat variable each side, either uh, easterly or a little westerly, but only waves there are maybe three to five feet. But getting over toward the Bering side, uh, east to southeast winds 25 to 30 knots, waves four to six feet. On Saturday, uh, channeling northeast winds will pick up to 40 knots there. Uh, at, uh, along the Kenai and the mainland, and then uh, waves building to 15 feet through there. 
in areas uh, on the west side of the bearing, uh, generally from the east, uh, north of Port Hyden, but westerly uh, as you get down uh, north of Cold Bay and waves uh, generally four to seven feet in the Bering side waters. As we get into the Aleutian chain, south to southwest winds, Ronald system works its way across the region at 20 to 25 knots and waves on the Pacific side around 10 feet, generally seven uh, to eight feet on, on the Bering side. And as we go into Saturday, those winds will shift more toward the west and northwest at 25 to 30 knots, waves on the Pacific side uh, in the eastern Aleutians running uh, around 10 to 14 feet on the north side, generally seven to nine feet uh, from Unalaska to our ADAC, but a little higher as you get uh, west of ADAC. And across the ice uh, pack on, on Saturday, Friday across the west coast, uh, winds are gonna pick up out of the northeast and east uh, upwards to 30, even 35 knots. Uh, we can see that winds as high as 45 knots with waves building to 20 feet south of St. Matthew Island. And as we uh, go through Saturday, northeast flow in place over the ice at 25 to near 30 knots and winds turning northwesterly at St. Paul and St. George with waves around six feet. Along the Arctic coast, winds will generally be out of the north at uh, around 10 to 15 knots especially northerly flow there on the northwest coast uh, from Wainwright southward all the way down uh, to Nome. And on Saturday, look for winds to be mainly east around 10 knots along the Arctic coast and northeasterly from Cape Lisburn southward through uh, Kotzebue Sound on down toward Nome and we're from 15 to 25 knots. Quick check of the surface weather maps. We have low pressure that is lingering out there um, along the southeast, and uh, that will continue to, to produce some snow showers along with some wind there as we go through tonight and into uh, Friday. More importantly, we have a, a double barrel low pressure system and an occluded front uh, frontal system that will be working its way across the bearings, providing uh, those uh, brisker winds. And then on Friday, we see that a uh, double area of low pressure moving uh, just north of the uh, Alaska Peninsula as it moves inland and the area out there over the central Bering Sea. And as we go into Saturday, we look for that area of low pressure approaching the mainland of the southwest. That will uh, become a little better organized, causing the winds to pick up, especially along Kodiak Island. So that's your marine weather for today. Thank you for watching. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.